Funding for the production of Public Square provided by the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, working to improve the lives of vulnerable children. We came out at 12 years old, you know, for the first time. Um, we all come out, like, on a daily basis, if, if, you know, not multiple times a day. The coming out process was a big period of self-hatred and I even contemplated taking my own life at one point because I felt there, there must have been a demon in me, there must have been something wrong with me like I had been told my whole life. You told them and they just opened the door and said, see ya? They said pretty much pack my bags and go. They're like, if you want to live like this, you can't be here at all. Wow. And then he shared with me what happened. I said, my God, son. You should never have gone out on the May, so what if he would have caught you? He says, Mom, I didn't want you to see if he killed me. How did you live through all this as a mom? Welcome to Public Square, where civic dialogue takes center stage. Our kids are at risk for much higher rates of suicide, much higher rates of addiction, much higher rates of self-harming behaviors. And so, you know, we just, we, we need our kids to just live. They are more likely to be bullied, more prone to suicide, and at greater risk for homelessness. The battle against discrimination of the LGBTQ community is being waged at home here in New Mexico and around the world. It is one of the pivotal rights issues of our day. Despite progress in the last 10 years, school and society remain a very risky place for young people who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgendered, and questioning. Transgendered. I'm in the Today, very, very we'll hear their stories about coming out. Okay. We will I also hear from problem. advocates and activists. Then we'll be joined by Every State Senator Cisco McSorley and Peter Peter Simonson, executive director of the American the Civil more, Liberties uh, Union's New Mexico experience. chapter. Before we start, we'll hear the story of a young person whose journey began quite early. Like a lot of eight-year-old boys, Tenzin Hausman loves playing football with his dad. It's one of the things he loves about being a boy, and that was something he was very sure about at a young age. This came to me from my heart. I kind of didn't like being a girl, and I just wanted to change into a bull and see how it felt. And I, when I noticed how it felt, I actually felt better being a boy than a girl. I didn't really like being a girl. Not my style. Tenzin was born Maya. My big surprise is I think as a parent, I was totally ready to deal with a transgender kid. What I didn't know about gender was how young gender identity is known by an individual. When Ten was still Maya, when Ten was three, we went to my mom's for Christmas and she had given him a gi, a karate gi costume, and a tutu. And he opened the karate gi and instantly like putting it on, tying the belt, and then he opened the tutu and he threw it across the room and said, that's for girls. <laughs> By the time kindergarten came around, Tenzin stopped trying to fit in as a girl, but he still continued going by Maya in school. That became a problem. In second grade, Ten was being asked constantly whether he was a boy or a girl. And because he was in school as Maya, even though he looked very much like a boy, um, he used the girls' bathrooms. And so one day when he was in the girls' bathroom, there was another little girl from another class um, who choked him, literally put her hands around his neck and choked him and, because he wouldn't admit that he was a boy and he was in the wrong bathroom. When I met with the teachers, they had some really interesting things to say. One of the teachers suggested that I send Tenzin to school with a bow in his hair so as not to confuse the other kids. So I realized that we needed to do some pretty big education. His mother found books and curriculum on gender and anti-bullying. She met with school officials who agreed to implement it. I think it's a conversation that needs to start very young because these kids deserve to be in safe environments and treated well. Since Tenzin has transitioned to being a boy full-time, these issues have gone away. 
Gender is being completely redefined from anything we understand, and it's the younger generation who are really showing us that we do not have two choices. You know, that gender is this continuum, and there's all these places to live on the continuum. And so um, I'm really heartened by that as a parent, you know, that, that he gets to live in a world that's even more open than the one that I grew up in. So I don't worry a lot. Of course, you know, there's that part of me, what I call my mama bear, who's always a little ready. <laughs> if they mess with my kid too much, I will pounce. <laughs> Tencent says he would tell kids like him to not be afraid to be themselves. It just feels better when you get it out more instead of keeping it in, instead of pretending to be somebody that you're not. I wanted to come here and share my experience, the road I walked with our son, who is gay, and hopefully that that will help other young people and, and probably more so parents to know what their child is dealing with in, in coming out. I'd like for people who are watching to understand that transgender people are people, that really when it comes down to it, we all want the same things. We're all human beings at heart. I'm a social worker and I do work with a lot of kids who are coming out. I work with a lot of kids who are displaced out of their homes and don't have places to go. And New Mexico is a hard state. You know, we don't have a lot of resources for gay and lesbian kids who are coming out um, altogether, but much less kids that are on the streets and, and um, don't have places to go. LGBTQ youth, they're four times more likely to attempt suicide than their heterosexual peers. They're bullied at two to three times the rate of their peers. And then often they're not feeling safe at school. They often don't have a safe adult to go to at school. So they're, they're much more at risk. If we don't start to resolve these issues, then we're gonna see a continued marginalization of people who are already incredibly marginalized. And what we see is increased substance use and abuse, increased survival sex, increased HIV transmission rates in our state, increased hepatitis transmission rates in our state, increased homelessness. All of these sort of societal problems that really we should be working to resolve will only get worse if we don't learn how to incorporate and integrate transgender folks into our culture.